welcome to this episode of the Mushroom Podcast. I'm here with Sarah Quayle of SQ Stitches, and I'm excited for this episode. Um, basically, Sarah is like a huge inspiration to me for like actually doing something that you talk about doing instead of just talking about it. Like, why not just actually take that step and just like freaking just jump dive into the deep end and just figure it out as you go and so i'm excited welcome sarah to your first episode of the mushroom i'm sure you'll be back in the future for other episodes but here we are and also this is another remote recording of the podcast last week was the first one but this is the second one hi thank you for having me i'm so excited um that you asked me to be on an episode so I think a little background is Sarah and I know each other because we work in the same lab. We're both doing our masters and technically we're the same age, but Sarah's a year below me because she took a fifth year and then that's how I met her cuz she did her undergrad thesis while I was doing my first year masters. And over that time, like working in the lab together, it's a pretty small lab, so you get to know each other pretty well. And I think we've become pretty good friends. And Sarah, about March of this year, 2020, she started a freaking business from scratch out of her crocheting hobby. And you hadn't even been crocheting like for that long, have you? No, I think I started maybe like the end of November, beginning of December of 2019. Mm -hmm. So like Agatha, I see a therapist um, and have been seeing my therapist for, I think, almost three years now. It will be three years next January. Um, And around October, November of 2019, I was having trouble sleeping and it would take me a really long time to fall asleep. And there's a method that my therapist was telling me about um, that when you're having trouble falling asleep and after about like 20 minutes uh, or whatever you think is 20 minutes, like don't look at the clock or anything, um, get up and do something until you're tired again and fall and go back to bed and then just keep trying over like every 20 minutes if you haven't fallen asleep again, like get up, do something. Um, But it was important that whatever you did wasn't too engaging. So, like, watching TV or being on your phone isn't good because of the blue light. But you also don't want to, like, read a book either, especially, like, if you're in school, like, a textbook, like, doing homework Mm -hmm. that would probably keep you up longer. So she recommended crocheting. And it was winter. I wanted, like, one of those, like, handmade blankets. So I... decided to make it myself um and then over um Christmas and stuff um my parents got me yarn so I could make myself my own sweater like one of those hand knit uh cardigan Mm -hmm. sweaters um and then I made stuff for like my family and some of my friends but I was kind of running out of things to make And, like, anything yarn-related, like, knitting, crocheting, a lot of, like, art-related hobbies could get expensive over time, especially, like, to make a blanket, you need, like, eight balls of yarn. If each ball is $10, there's, like, 80 bucks right there. Um, So I decided, I was, like, toying around with the idea of selling it, um... And I spoke to some of my friends about it. I think you were one of them um, about whether or not I should start doing it. And everyone was super encouraging. Yeah, Um, I remember you kept, I think you were crocheting a lot in the lab on like whenever you had any downtime and you had like scrunchies that you had made and you kept saying like, oh, like to literally everyone in the lab, you're like, oh, if you want one, I could just make you one. And we're like, girl, we should pay you for this. Because they're so good and they're so cute and they're like they take time and obviously material costs. And yeah, everyone in the lab was like, you need to like start selling this stuff. 
Yeah. And, like, I kept, in, like, insisting you guys just to take it. <laughs> But you like you all wanted to pay for it, and I'm like, no, like you guys are my friends. Um, but yeah, so I started doing research in like February into March about like platforms on whether or not I should um, use Etsy or use Shopify or Amazon, like Facebook Marketplace, or like just like. Some people also, like, use Instagram as a platform to sell. Um, Yeah, so I did a bunch of research, and then I was, like, almost ready to go. Um, And then uh, I picked Shopify uh, because over time the costs would be cheaper, even though at first it's more expensive than other platforms. Um, How does that work? So... So each platform has a different way of of where they like how they charge people. Mm-hmm. Um so let's say like Facebook, um like the Facebook shop or whatever it's called, um you can sell stuff I think for free, like there's no extra charge, but if you want to do advertising, that's where they get their money from. If you want to like promote whatever you posted. Okay. Um, and same with Instagram, Instagram and Facebook are like the same. Um, and then Etsy, which is a lot of like what um, people who make handmade things you use. Um, but like I was looking into it and then they're, they don't charge you per month but they charge you in terms of like your listings. So each listing is like 20 cents for three months. And then they also take, I think 10 or 15% from each transaction. And then um, I think if your listing has like different variety options, there's also a charge for that. And just like I make, like, I obviously want to have a bunch of different options, so it would have just been, like, more in the long run. Yeah, because every, like, scrunchy color that you have is a whole, like, separate thing, right? Yeah. That you have to click, like, if it was on Etsy. Yeah, and, like, maybe I just understood, misunderstood, like, their, like, rules or whatever, but... Um, I also, like, went on, like, different blogs, like, of people who, like, tested different platforms, and they all, like, most of them said um, Shopify, and Shopify is a Canadian company, but they charge you in U.S. pricing, so I don't know if, like, they are now in the U.S., but originally they were Canadian, Um, but it's, like, There's different tiers of how much a month would cost depending on what you want. But since, Mm -hmm. like, I'm the only one, like, I'm one person business and um, just starting out, I have one of the cheaper ones. Um, And, yeah, and I'm still able to sell through Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, through Shopify. So all the inventory and stuff is connected. Um, And then there's, like also a bunch of like advertising and like mailing apps and stuff within Shopify that helps me so it's like all organized in one place which is kind of like what I like about it Mm -hmm. and there's even an option to like track inventory and how much um things cost to make so then you could um keep track of your profits that way okay Um, so So what it sounds like to me is like Facebook and Instagram would have been the cheapest option, but they didn't have all these extra features that you wanted, right? Yeah, like I felt like Facebook and Instagram, you kind of like, you had to be really good at social media and like understanding it in order Uh to sell through that way. Uh And I am not one of those people. (laughs) And like, it would have been cheaper but I also like the idea of having my own website that people could go to mm-hmm. rather than just like DMing me on whatever platform yeah, and true. just 
doing it that way. Like for me, it's a little bit more professional. And Shopify also has discounts on shipping. So that was also a bonus. It's like not much. I think it's only like 10%, but it's still cheaper than like doing everything regularly. Mm -hmm. So I guess at this point we're in chronologically we're in February and you're just like researching websites, platforms, and you finally land on Shopify and then what? Like how how do you begin? Um, so also Shopify- I wanna say I wanna say a lot of um a lot of people, because this is where I would get stuck always with any sort of like dream of mine or any sort of like like want to start something new, I would get stuck in that researching phase. You know? Like I would start like for example, if I were to start a crochet shop, I would start researching platforms and like doing all this research and then like either I would pick one or I wouldn't, but I would get so overwhelmed with all the research and all the stuff that I need to know and like I would get so scared that I don't know enough. And then I, it's also like something you're doing in your free time. You're not like getting paid for it yet. So I would just lose motivation because I'd feel like not stupid, but just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. How did you get past that to actually start? Yeah. Um... Or are you just that kind of person and you've always been? <laughs> no, I definitely haven't always been that person like I I guess like uh, towards like the end of high school beginning of university like I was like one of those people people who had like one of those like fancy planners and like I don't know how many people that listen to this podcast like see the like planning videos on YouTube and stuff like I was very like into that and I would like watch a lot of videos of people who have like those sticker shops so oh yeah like even that's definitely a niche on YouTube (laughs) yeah so like ever like since I started doing that I don't do that as much anymore because it ended up being so time consuming but like I used to always think oh it would be so cool to have a shop like if it's for stickers or whatever like I feel like that would be so cool but I never thought I was like creative enough to do it so like I just, like, continued on my university experience as, like, a biochemist. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, like, researching about, like, the sites and stuff ended up being something for me to do so I could procrastinate on my schoolwork. Oh. (laughs) I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing this assignment. Like, let's just Google this. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so... Because it was, like, too right around, like, heavy season, and I was still an undergrad at the time, so I had five courses, midterms, and assignments. Um, And then Shopify, um, if you want to go through them, I think they still do this. They do, like, a two-week free trial. Like, you can't sell anything during those two weeks, but you could, like, go on, build your website and oh, okay. stuff like that like play around with it so I was playing around with it for about a week and then I was actually talking to Maria I think one day and then I was like you know what I think I'm just gonna open it tomorrow like it was like not too much like prepping in advance which is like very opposite of me like I like to plan every single thing uh-huh but I was just like you know what like it's ready kind of And, like, it's not like I have, like, a bunch of people who are going to want to buy things right away. It It's, like, this is, like, the soft opening of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. I think that's kind of the key, right? That's kind of the key of jumping in is, like, you're waiting for it to be 100% ready. But you kind of just have to be okay with that 80% ready and then just go for it or else you're never going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I wouldn't have never been like a hundred percent ready like I think I had some things made so I could take pictures of it 
to put mm-hmm. like put on the website of what the product looks like but it's not like I had like things ready to made ready to ship out I don't even think I had shipping supplies yet at that point <laughs> like I was just like you know what let's just do it and seize because like you also like can't get like full advantage of the website or of anything until you're actually like open yeah so I was like I'll just do it tomorrow and then I like announced that I was going to open it and I opened it and then yeah I um so that was ended up being I think the middle of March it was, was around like the COVID shutdown yeah it was like I think it was either during like the reading week or the week before our reading week in March. And then they announced that after reading week, I think we weren't going to go back. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it was like kind of good timing, I guess, because I had extra time on my hands. True. Um, And it ended up being a good thing too, because of COVID Shopify gave two months free for any new businesses starting. So oh my God, I was, that's perfect. So I was able to get, I think, a month or two free. Um, so which helped the upfront costs a lot. I uh, started an Instagram, a Facebook page. Um, I now have a Pinterest for it. That's something that I've had to start to navigate now with the podcast and it sucks especially (laughs) like because I never really had like an active Instagram page like personal since or like before the podcast really and so I've had to learn how to post things and also like what like a I have to learn how to post things and then b is, like, I have to make them pretty and, like, eye-catching, and I suck at that. So, and you said that you didn't really, like, know about, like, all the intricacies of social media much before then either. How do you navigate the marketing side of it, having, like, no real experience? Yeah, so marketing is definitely one of the hardest things I've had to overcome, um so I guess the one downfall with Shopify is that unless you're gonna pay someone to advertise for you or like pay extra through Shopify for those advertisements um all your advertising is done yourself whereas like Etsy or even Amazon like someone searches let's say scrunchies then like there's a bunch of options right and on Shopify they don't really have like a search page it's no, just like your website. That's yeah, it. it's just your website. Like the person goes to yeah. that website. Um, so I knew off the bat marketing was all going to be difficult. Social media for me was like one of the triggers for my anxiety. It has always been. And yeah, so before I opened the store, I hadn't used any social media for a really long time. And so creating a business like Instagram account and then sharing it on my personal account like oh my god I know was like a huge trigger for me I'm going through the same thing exactly the same thing like you like you don't post for years people like barely remember that you exist and then all of a sudden you come out and it's just like oh she's doing a thing okay, this is weird. And then I start like thinking about what everyone, like all my friends who, not even friends, like acquaintances who I haven't spoken to in years are going to like all of a sudden be like, oh, she's doing this out of nowhere. And then what are they going to think of me? You know, how, how do you, how do you get past that fear? I mean, I guess I've had to get past it, but it's been through a lot of talking to you about it. Yeah. And I think honestly, I haven't even completely gone past it. Um, Like, I went to an arts high school, and so it was very, like, drama-filled, heavily female-populated, so (laughs) people can imagine what it was like. Um, I had some really good friends there. Like, I'm not 
saying it was a horrible experience, but there was definitely like some people that like I not like big fans of and it was mainly because of some cattiness and like I was just anxious a lot because I heard them talk about other people behind their backs I could only imagine what they would be exactly. saying about me yes. behind my back I so, had I had a few friends like that too where like yeah like they'd be saying like talking some mad shit about other people and then I'm just like, we're not that close. So I can't imagine what you're saying about me. <laughs> so then yeah. that led to me avoiding social media for so many years because I don't – I knew that anything that I would post would be scrutinized and then would be talked about. Like not saying that, oh, I'm that important. <laughs> but people like to gossip. People like to know what's going on. And – Sometimes you think of an acquaintance back in high school and you're like, oh, I wonder what they're up to now. And then you look at their page and then you feel like you know their whole life, even though they post like 10 pictures or something. That's what I was afraid of. So I had avoided it for so long. Yeah, exactly. Like, I know, like, I'm not, I guess, like you said, like, I'm not like an important person or anything. Like, I don't think they're actively like going to see like what no, I'm posting, exactly. but. I also but know, out like, of curiosity. Yeah, or even, would, like, would look. Instagram sends notifications when someone hasn't posted in a while, and then oh, they yeah. posted. <laughs> or even if they share hasn't shared a story in a while, and then they shared a story. Like, I guess that's where, like, my anxiety was coming from. Like, oh, what if so-and-so, or even, like, what if everyone gets, like, a po like, a notification that I posted, and they see what it's about, and then they go on that Instagram Mm -hmm. and then like what if they end up like gossiping with everybody about it exactly like, that was like something I kind of just had to like not necessarily get over but like just ignore that anxiety for now mm -hmm. and was there any like specific like way of thinking around it that you did to sort of convince yourself that it was fine um or any sort of maybe tips that your therapist gave you with handling uh, it? She always, like, recommends to set boundaries for yourself and try not to exceed those boundaries. Um, so, like, what I did, like, if I do share something on my personal account, I share it and then don't log back into my personal account. I won't see who looked at it or anything. I don't have to worry about what they might be thinking because I don't know who saw it. Okay. Do you use that promote button? Because I've looked at it on Instagram and I know it costs money, but it's like not too much money. Uh, yeah. Is it I've, worth? I've used it a couple of times depending on the post. Um, if it's like a giveaway that I'm having, I'll like use that. So then more people have the opportunity to see it mm -hmm. and like to enter the giveaway. Um, and just to, like, I guess, like, a way to see my website. Yeah. Um, but I don't use it all the time because you can set your budget to, let's say, like, $2 a day versus, like, $5 or $10 a day. Um, but, like, over time, if I were to do it for every post, then that would be... It like, definitely adds up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I only do it, like, once in a while or, like... Um, if I'm having a special event, like I'll use it for that. Mm -hmm. Do you find that it does drive more uh, traffic to your page? Um, not necessarily. Um, I get more likes, obviously, through that, but not okay. so many. Like I'll get a few more people like actually going back to my profile. But yeah, I think like that's the hardest thing about social media and marketing is like actually getting engagement because yeah. sure they could like the photo, but will they like take the next step to look at your pro profile, maybe follow you, maybe go to your website, like yeah, actually look at the product. Yeah. Because yeah. that's your like ultimate goal is to get them onto the website and to buy something. Yeah. So like that's still like I'm still learning on like what are the best ways to do that? And, like, even that, like, requires research of, like, 
looking at blogs or other people who've done it or like Mm -hmm. I'll go on like other accounts that are doing well and like I try and see what they're doing but like being a full-time student like having another job plus doing this it takes a lot of time to set up like your social media and to have posts ready all the time like the people that are doing success like doing well and are successful in their business post every day sometimes multiple times a day always have a story and like doing like Instagram lives and all that stuff which is not something I have time for right now Mm -hmm. and may never have time for to do like all of that social media work and that's kind of the vicious cycle right because you want to grow and you want to be big enough so that you have enough money from this like side gig that then you can afford to make it like a bigger part of your life maybe you can even make your full-time job eventually if you get big enough but then until you get there you don't have time for it when that's arguably the time that like you need it the most because you need to grow it from nothing. Yeah, there are like times where I like try and make a bunch of different products so then I have a bunch of different photos to then like be able to post every day or even every other day or a couple times a week. But like I'll do that for a week and then I haven't had time to do it again because I'm playing catch up from the time I spent doing it the time before. Yep, exactly. And like even with the podcast, like I've been trying to keep up like a once a week schedule, but a lot of my episodes I had pre-recorded from July, July and August, and then I released them for most of September. And then now I'm in October and I've run out of like pre-recorded episodes and I've had to like start recording new ones. And then, like, I don't have the time to record more than just one a week. And then I have to hurry up and edit that so that it's out for Thursday. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, like, I did that one. But now I'm back to zero again of, like, my stockpiled, you know? It's so much work to just, like, edit because, like, an episode can be – it depends on who I'm talking to (laughs) – But it can go up to like four hours and then to listen through that and then edit it. Like I have to listen through it at least once. So that's another four hours of editing. And then I have to, it's at least like four more hours to actually like cut it and like make it good and then have to listen through it again. Like it's just like pure time that I don't have. Yeah, like even for me, like I don't have like all that editing and stuff you do, but it takes time to make the product and then like take a picture of it, which I need to have good lighting and like stuff for me to do, which was also a learning curve for me because I'm not very good at photography. So I had to get like my sister to help me for Mm -hmm. a while in the beginning. And then now I'm like a little bit better at it and posting it on my website, which always takes time because I'm very slow and like getting the photo on it and like writing a description and then if I wanted to post it on social media I need a caption and like what hashtags do I do do I tag anything in it like I don't know exactly and like also new episodes like I was posting on uh the mushroom pod instagram follow at the mushroom pod um and I was posting for, like, new episodes, and then my sister sees it, and she's like, oh my god, Agatha, like, this looks so cringe, because it's just, like, a screenshot of the new episode. Like, you have to put an effort to, like, make, like, a graphic design and make it actually eye-catching. I'm like, girl, how much time do you think I have? I'm not gonna learn graphic design from scratch just so I can, like, make eye-catching ads or whatever. And she's like, do you want to be successful or not? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, but I'm also a full-time master's student. That's like me with like my photos. Like I'm not going to spend a bunch of time editing it because one, I don't know how. And two, that requires time. And like even my website, like 
if I look at other websites, they like have a bunch of things like you click here and like that's like contact us, click here, like review an item. Like I had to learn yeah. how to do that. And even though Shopify is very user friendly and usually you just have yep. to click a button and that option's available. Other times though, you have to like learn like how to code it into the website. And I don't know how to code things. Yeah. And I, I had to learn like editing. Like I edit the podcast in GarageBand, which like thankfully I have a Mac, so it was already free on there. But I had to learn it. And then like I had never done any kind of audio editing. And then I also had to like learn how a podcast even works, like distribution wise. Like I need an RSS feed. I need to like figure out how to get it on these other websites. I need to like actually get it out there. Like that's also something you have to learn. And I don't know, like, I guess people who don't do it don't realize how much behind the scenes stuff goes into actually just like making something new, whatever, whatever it is, like crocheting and selling it or making a podcast and distributing it. Like, there's so much to learn. And that I get sass for my sister being like, why don't you make nicer posts? Like, that's the least of my worries. (laughs) Since I'm on Instagram and I follow a bunch of other people that have small businesses or even are doing podcasts or are like like a personal trainer, like anything that it's like it's their work or their art that they're selling and trying to like spread the word, like a lot of people post about like sass they're getting from customers or even other people on social media that are just there to argue with people and like some people don't realize like how much work and effort it takes to do one thing like even let's say you're like me you're crocheting something like my Mm -hmm. prices are pretty reasonable I think they really are and I still get people saying like there's a lot of people saying that I could increase the prices, but there's still people saying that I could lower it. And they don't realize like a $5 item might take me a couple hours to make. So at that yep. point, I'm making like what a dollar an hour when you take yeah, away that's all ridiculous. the um, fees, material of- costs and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fees of the website, shipping costs even. Yeah, I mean, you can never please everybody. There's always going to be people who disagree. That's just something that you have to, I guess, learn. We're doing this as a hobby. Like maybe it would be different if we were unemployed and then this was our way of trying to start a business and then start making money and maybe become entrepreneurs full time. Like then it would make sense. Like I want to, you know, have a living. I want to actually like make money from this and make this my full-time career but we're not and we're just doing this for fun and if it can bring like any sort of real real amount of money for us in the end then it's just a bonus yeah exactly like when I started this it was purely because I was running out of things to make for my family and friends and it was also getting expensive so I was gonna start it and just like charge people the cost of the material um but then like I decided to not do that and like actually like make it a halfway decent price um because also like if someone sees something for a dollar then is it because they're only yeah they might think it's cheap or is it because yeah it's cheap um like if I see something for a dollar that's like you know that app wish yeah it's like wish prices and then you know it's coming from like China and it's like gonna look like those memes expectation versus reality (laughs) yeah exactly um you don't want to put out a bad image by charging too little (laughs) yeah and like I do work really hard for everything I sell so when I started it um and this is still my plan today um like any profits I do make I'm going to use to like donate or even like make things to donate like hats and scarves and blankets especially now that it's getting like closer to winter and there's people that aren't able to 
get that for themselves or their children and need those things. And if one day I'm able to do more than that and actually pay myself for the time I'm working, then that's great. But for now, like I'm happy just to be able to make the item, sell it to people who can, who likes the item and be able to help other people like after with the profits. That's great. I just have to get to that profit stage. Exactly. And like me and my podcast, podcasts are not profitable unless you have sponsors. And for you to get sponsors, you have to have a lot of views. And to get a lot of views, you have to put a lot of effort in (laughs) in the beginning to make a bunch of episodes, market them, get them out there. And that's hard to do. Like, that's hard to do unless it's like your full time thing that you're putting all your time into. Yeah, exactly. But it is it is fun. It is rewarding, I think. Yeah. Have you had have you had anyone like reach out to you? Because we spoke about um, how scary it was to like put ourselves out there on social media because of judgment from our like people who would know us from the past. But have you received like like good reviews? Not even reviews, but have you received anybody reaching back out to you and saying anything good? Yeah, like um, some of my good friends from high school like reached out and like saw that I was doing it, saying all like the good for yous and stuff like that. Um, And then like I even had some people who I wasn't so close with like end up following my page. Which is, like, great. I'm so thankful for everyone who supports me. Um, And then I also had some people who, like, ordered some things that I haven't spoken to in, like, since high school. Um, And some of those people ended up starting their own businesses, too. So it's, like, great that they were able to support me and, like, I try and support them as well. Um. And same with, like, everyone that I know. Like, I try and, like, share your podcast on my social media. And, like, um, when, like, people I know start a business, I try and, like, share it. Um, Whether or not it helps, I don't know. But, like, I try and support, like, all my friends and anyone starting, like, something like this. Because it is challenging, definitely, at first. Yeah. I definitely appreciate any time that you, like, post about the mushroom on your page. So, let's go back to your story. Uh, Yeah, so I opened up in March, um, kind of learning things as I went in terms of the website and social media. Um, I had, of course, like, a lot of my friends and family supporting my shop and, like, ordering things shortly after I want to say sometime in the summer uh someone reached out to me because they were starting a storefront in Toronto um and the store was selling only handmade things she was planning on having a bunch of different vendors and thought that my stuff would be great in the store and asked if I wanted um to join her and have a space um that's so cool do you know do you know how she ended up finding you um she just found me through like instagram so apparently she was like maybe she was like like, following my page for a while like not a while because it's only been a couple months but like over the couple months at that time she didn't have like many people who crocheted or knitted to be in the store so She thought it would be great if I was there. And yeah, like I took some time to think about it. I had a list of questions to ask her um, because, of course, I wanted to make sure I knew what I was getting into. Then in July, I decided, well, I think it was actually earlier, maybe in that June. I decided, oh, you know what? Let's try it. I know how much it would cost me to do it. I know what I would be losing, what I could be gaining. Um, so yeah, I like told her, I'm like, okay, let's do this. I like paid for my first month, um, got to see the store, signed the contract. Um, and then 
the whole summer I was just making things to stock the store. Um, and then the end of August, um, I set it up and then it opened in September. The first like grand opening weekend was like super fun. I went the first day. You came to visit with your sister. Yeah, um, I got so many things. Yeah, I like oh, I spent so much. I spent more than what the rent is. <laughs> in like supporting all the other vendors there. There's so many cool handmade things. And I'm like, and it, truly, it's not just supporting them because the things that they make are like really great. Like I really actually bought stuff that I know I'm going to use and I'm going to really love. Yeah, like I've like went through like I bought some candles, have like went through those like soap. <laughs> um, there is like people that make face masks, which everyone needs now. There's also like a bunch of um, cards and really like cute little puns on them and like little characters and it's all like printed on seed paper so then you can just like cut it up put it in a pot and plant it and it will grow wildflowers and I think that's so cool and like eco-friendly yeah there's there's a lot of really cool stuff yeah so many vendors like try and make things that are eco-friendly like like you said the cards and like um even like the people who like make candles and like I guess like bath products like soap and stuff um if anything's in a jar like you could take it back to be recycled Mm -hmm. and used again which I think is super like cool and like even some of the candles like if you take back the jar and you want to get a new one you could like refill it at like a cheaper price which like that's cool Maybe yeah i'll take back some of my candles i still haven't fully gone through them there's some that are, have like this much at the bottom that i still have to get through <laughs> yeah yeah like i have um, a couple that if anyone's like if anyone's uh convinced by us raving about the store it's called maker's market and it's in downtown toronto uh sarah what's the address um yeah so it's in the junction um the specific address for the store is 3124 Dundas Street West um it's like a great area there's like a bunch of like cool like stores and stuff um there's even like across the street there's like a a bookstore um that has like rare books and stuff that I went to and there's like a gazebo across the street and a Tim Hortons So if you want to, like, spend the day there, shop around, like, have your Tims and, like, sit outside. It's not so great now since it's getting colder, but maybe next summer when it's a nice day. Or you could go in the winter and get, like, a nice cup of hot chocolate at Tims and walk around. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) With your mittens. (laughs) But, yeah, if you're ever down there, check out Sarah's booth. Uh, in the Maker's Market store in the Junction in downtown Toronto. And it's called SQ Stitches. And she has a bunch of uh, really, really cute scrunchies in all different colors. I think I have one in every single color that she has available so far. Every time she comes out with a new color, I buy it. <laughs> Just, you know, you got to have a scrunchie for every outfit. <laughs> yeah, match your scrunchie with your outfit. There's also more things that Sarah has. Sarah offers, like, really cute, like, crochet plant holders like they hold up a pot and you can put a plant in it and she sells it separately and she also sells it with a potted plant if you don't have one already and they're like they're hanging in the shape of like koalas and uh sloths I think koala not a koala yet uh yeah I have a koala now I just brought it okay uh this weekend so there's a koala there and I'll be adding it to my website soon um yeah I have like a duckling and then I just have like some like plain ones that are like colorful for those not into animals she can also do like custom uh sized clothing I think she has like a top and a bralette so far on her website you can order on the website or in the store you can I think fill something out or something at the store there's all like my information so like go on my website or send me an email or a message through any of my social media. Yeah, there's definitely, like, I have a lot of ideas for the next couple months of, like, 
products to make. Um, I have like I of course yeah, you're always make- coming up with, with new ideas. Like for fall, she has a an acorn and oak leaf different colored leaf garland that I bought for my sister, and she put it up in her room and um stuffed pumpkins to put like I don't know decorations yeah like if you don't want to buy a real pumpkin it's like a crocheted pumpkin um and then for Halloween I have like I'm making like these spider web and spider like decorations to put like in a doorway or uh, in on a wall like wherever um and then really cute for like winter I'm going to be making some hats and scarves and mitts. Um, Are you going to also make like Christmas decorations? Yeah, I have like so many ideas for Christmas ornaments and like um, like mini Christmas trees. Um, if like you can't have a real tree, you could have a mini crocheted tree. I'll definitely get one for my desk in the lab. Yeah, and, like, I um, like so just cute. got these, like, crocheted books, too, that, like, shows you how to make, like, custom dolls and, like, pets, too. Like, if you want a stuffed animal of your, like, dog, whatever dog you have, like, I'm going to start working on that. Um, But, yeah, of course, like, everything takes time. So, I have so many ideas. I just have to find the time to do them sarah's also really into dogs you have two pet dogs right with your family and a lot of her items in her store are also like dog friendly yeah like i have two maltesers um and of course they always have a bow in their hair um so yeah and jazzy yeah um they also have an Instagram page um, at Rosie and Jazzy Q the Maltese. And yeah, so I have like a bunch of like pet related things. Like I have bow ties if you have male dogs or even for your female ones. Um, I have like flowers that could go on their collars. Um, I have like these princess tiaras for their hair. If you have a dog like mine that has a little top knot. Um, I even have like crocheted dispensers for like the doggy bags. If you don't want a plastic one, I have the crocheted ones and I can make it in literally every color. Um, I do have like, I specified colors on my website, but that's just because I have so many colors, I can't list them all. So if anyone wants- Yeah, you have a whole binder full of yarn colors and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, I started to keep inventory of the different yarn I have and I have it in a binder. So if anyone ever wants like a specific color, just like send me an email or a message through my website or like if you place an order like in the comments section, like just tell me and I'll do my best to make it in whatever color you want. So yeah, since the opening of the store, um, it's been doing pretty well. I haven't like met as much as I was making yet but with Christmas coming around I'm hoping it will start to get a little bit busier um so as we said like if you live in the GTA check it out um like I would appreciate it but of course all the other vendors would appreciate it um even if you like like paintings like there's a bunch of painters there and their art is really good um, and if you like uh, handmade, like, clay earrings, I really love the earring makers there, too. And the candle makers, the candles all smell really good. Yeah, and there's also a bunch of things for if you have babies or young children. Like, I'm so happy I don't have a child because I'd end up spending even more <laughs> money because I'd also um, want to buy stuff from all of them. Like, it's super cute, like, for boys and girls. I've been... I guess debating on like trying other stores as well in Ontario. Um, But I think I want to wait until 
I get maybe a little bit more profitable if that's a possibility. True, because then you will just be more in the negatives with like rent and stuff. Yeah, there's like other stores that do it differently. Like um, the store you pay for your space and then you get 100% of the sales. Um, And then there's other places that have like a cheaper rent fee, but then they take a cut. Oh, but then they take a percentage. Yeah. Can I ask you how, maybe for someone who is like starting their own business and trying to get into one of these like brick and mortar stores, how, because for you, it kind of happened that this, like the store owner reached out to you, but maybe how would you go about doing it if you were trying to get into a store? Um, Mm -hmm. So all the stores that are like this one have like an application you could fill out um, if they've been like opened for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. So like I come across a lot of stores now through social media. Um, I think now since I am in one of those stores, like I end up finding more. And even if you Google it, it just gets like, recommended Googled, to you. Like, um, I've Googled like handmade stores in like, I'll say like the GTA or what in Ontario and like mm-hmm. a bunch come up. Um, so yeah, like if you wanted to get into that, in, into a store, like I would like Google it or look on social media and like fill out their application if they have one or if you want to check out the space like I would just go to the store like during their opening hours and like talk to anyone there um or like email or like message like the store owner to get more information like most people like are super friendly and even though it's scary to like put yourself out there like I've found it to be worth it like you kind of just have to think what's the worst case scenario. Like they say, oh no, sorry, we don't have any space at the moment. Like try again in a month or however X amount of months. Or maybe I could like, maybe they would ask for your information in case the spot does open up. Like everyone like that has a store, it like I find is super friendly. They kind of have to be if they want people to be selling their stuff there. True. So even if you're scared to reach out, I would try and do it anyways. I know that's like hard to do, um, but whatever like coping technique you have, like maybe do that. Like if you like to exercise, maybe like exercise before, get those endorphins up and like do it and maybe that will help. Like I don't know. Everyone's different. What is the next exciting thing that you have planned for the next week or whenever we're going to put it out? Uh, Yeah, so um, I'm super excited for this. Um, Agatha and I have decided to kind of collaborate and make some merchandise for her podcast. Um, So... Because think about it, we're, we were like, okay, how would a podcast and a crochet shop ever collab? And we're like, bam, we got it, merchandise. <laughs> and it's yeah. perfect. Yes. Yeah. so for Agatha's podcast, if you look at the cover art, there's a mushroom and a butterfly. So I... With talking to her, I have made her a mush plush E. (laughs) It Um, is so so, cute. So it's a stuffed mushroom with a butterfly on it, and it looks like the mushroom and butterfly on her um, cover art for her podcast. Um, How tall is it in real life? Because I've only seen pictures of it because of COVID. um, But is it like a foot or something it feels big not big but like a good size um, let me actually measure it so it's about seven inches tall um and about four and a half to five inches like wide it's um, so cute for like the top part in the mushroom and yeah it's super cute and like 
I just like always grab it by like the <laughs> like the stem of the mushroom and like even like of course like I would want the people to like take care of it. It's like a little plushy, it's so cute. But if you ever need like one of those damn it dolls and you have the mushroom, I feel like you could kind of also use it for that. <laughs> like a stress reliever. <laughs> yeah. Because like it kind of like looks like the hammer, but uh, the top part is a mushroom. But yeah, no, it's super cute. And like th- there's a butterfly on it. And I actually made the butterfly with a, a bar pin so it is removable and you could like put it on your like jacket or something as like a little like accessory or you can leave it on the mushroom it's so cute so the mushroom is red with um white spots but it's kind of off-white so we went we decided to go for like a more uh what you call it like a rustic sort of color scheme like it's less like bright and cartoony and more just kind of like for the fall aesthetic i would say like the red is like a rusty red and then even the white spots are kind of off white and then the blue of, of the butterfly the butterfly is actually two tone blue and it has like a mm-hmm. nice um sort of turquoise not even turquoise teal inside and then um a darker blue outside yeah and it's really cute and i love it and if you want one of your own uh i will put a link in in the description of this episode and upcoming episodes as well to Sarah's store online. And she has free shipping, I think still within Canada. Yeah. Free shipping with Canada post and um, feel free to browse other things on Sarah's website and, you know, order some stuff for your dogs or scrunchies or custom sized garments or whatever, but also Buy some mushroom merch and get yourself a little plushie. And we might come out with more merchandise um, later on. We have a lot of stuff uh, planned. But so far, this is the first piece of merchandise we have. And it's super cute. And I love it. And and I'm going to get myself one. And yeah, super exciting. <laughs> now we can get to some questions and answers. So yeah. I asked around... Uh, My friends and family and Sarah put out a poll on her Instagram, follow her SQ underscore stitches, and she put out a story asking for questions. So I compiled all the questions we got and here we go. My mom actually wanted to ask this first one. She was the first person I went to and she wants to know uh, who in your family is creative or where do you think you got this creativity from? Um, hmm. my mom's side of the family has always like knitted or crocheted or sewed. So I think that aspect um, came from her. Um, Like my mom and my grandma were actually the ones who taught me how to crochet. And I used to knit when I was younger and they've also taught me that. Yeah, like I've always done like something and then like went and I danced too. So I think like the art side has always been there which is like very weird I've been told since like in school I study science and usually (laughs) if like you're doing science you're not very like artistic like stereotypically see that's the thing that I totally completely disagree with because science is so creative in my opinion because I've I've also been creative a lot of my life. And the fact that I'm in science also is kind of contradictory because the, people see science as like numbers and statistics and whatever. But that's not what I'm in it for. I'm in it for like the theories and like imagining like how things work and that kind of stuff. So I think it does go hand in hand. Yeah, I think it definitely depends on like what specifically like what you field do. Like, you're we in. are like biochemists so it's very different than like physicists or definitely material chemists like who are more like numbers but uh, yeah a lot of science is numbers but I think a lot of science is also creative and I think people do uh not take that into account and don't give us enough credit (laughs) yeah like 
even in high school and stuff, like, I was very into math and science. Like, those are the subjects I excelled in. And, like, especially being in an art school, like, there were very many of us, like, dancers and artists and, like, drama musicians that, like, were also very good in science. And we were, like, the anomaly, I guess. Even if, like, my business does, like, very well. Like, I don't think I'd ever want to give up having a job or anything science related because I like both. Yeah, I agree. But I think, I think on my end, like, if I were to turn, like, podcasting, I don't even know if podcasting, but like, this sort of thing, communicating into a job, I think I could easily, like, merge it with science because science communication is like a big thing. And I do see myself going down that path in the future. And, um, yeah, I agree. Like science and creativity, I think go hand in hand a lot of times. But I guess more onto your question, like I definitely get like the crocheting side from my mom's side. I think the more business side would be from my dad because he's a salesman. Then you're really lucky that these two people came together to make you. (laughs) Yeah. So like definitely like when I was like starting the business and like, um selling things like I did like talk to my dad about that Mm -hmm. because like I didn't know what I was doing but yeah or even like whether or not to do the store like I asked him about it like what he thought because from being like a manager and being in sales like he had some experience with that so I definitely grabbed aspects from both parents in doing this that's good. I I think that's really helpful to have people like that to go to for advice with actual like experience. Do you feel like that's a big advantage in social media marketing is to show your personality? Um, I think it helps humanize your business because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people forget that there's a human behind the business. Right. And like I know people who are, like, more personal on their business accounts, um, which I'm not necessarily, like, I'll, like, post some things, but, like, there's also other things I like to keep private, um, just because, like, who knows who will be looking at my account, like, it is a public account, so I, there's some things I don't want to share with the whole world. So, another question is... I guess, I mean, I guess you kind of answered this already in our previous conversation, but, like, how do you figure out pricing? And how do you determine, because it's, like, you kind of have to self-analyze, like, the value of your labor, you know? Yeah, so pricing is one of the toughest things other than marketing um, for me, um, because, like, I think I automatically, like, compare things to what you buy in a store. But those are mass-produced. Yeah, that are mass-produced. So I'm, like, trying to train myself to compare to other things that are handmade and also, like, what I think my time is worth. Um, But again, like, I'm not really doing this to be able to pay myself. Right. So I kind of, like, try and look at it, like, okay, a ball of yarn costs this much how much of that ball I use to make this item and then like okay then like try and assess like how much like if the item requires a hair tie or his stuff like stuffing to stuff it like how much of that I used to try and get like a materials cost Mm -hmm. and then kind of like see okay how long did it take me to work like make that item And depending on the item, I kind of just make the cost that way. So, like, a scrunchie um, costs, like, 50 cents to a dollar of material. But then it takes me, like, half an hour to 45 minutes to make it. So then I sell my scrunchies for $5. As, like, kind of, like, a guessing point. And then I kind of compare my other items to new items. Mm-hmm. to 
get the prices of that new item. Yeah, I guess it's good if you have a baseline already of products priced. Yeah. To sort of compare. What is the hardest thing that you've made? And what is your favorite thing that you've made? Um, hmm. This is a really hard question to answer. Um, <laughs> the hardest or the favorite? Both. <laughs> um, I think the hardest thing right now for me to make would probably be the like acorn and leaf garland just because mm. the pieces are like either small or like require like me to be careful of like what stitch I'm doing because it involves different stitches to like get True. the leaf pattern um it's very interesting so it's not necessarily hard but it's like I need to actually pay attention more whereas mm. like now I've gotten to the point where for some things like I could like stitch without necessarily looking at the product yeah like you could probably make a scrunchie in your sleep at this point yeah like I could like it's like people who could text without looking at their phone Uh like I could crochet without like I could just feel it with my fingers rather than like actually needing to look at it um my favorite thing yeah your favorite thing that's a hard question because usually like depending on the product like I make it I have to make it so many times like the scrunchies I've made so many times that like it may have used to be my favorite thing to make but not so much anymore I don't know like I just like trying to make new things so I don't so would think you I say have... would you say the most newest thing is your favorite until the next newest thing <laughs> yeah like I think the like, the most recent things I've made is the koala and your mushroom. Like, even, like, the beakers and stuff I made for... So, for all my lab mates, after I finished my undergrad thesis as, like, a thank you for all their help and support, I made them, like, stuffed beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks. They were so um, cute. I still have mine on my desk. Yeah, so for those of you who are not in a science background and don't know what there are, they're basically glassware that we use in the lab. But they're like a stuffed animal. And they have a little face on it with the googly eyes. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So I really enjoyed making that those. Um, I don't know if it's because it was like a gift to you guys or if they were just actually fun to make. I don't know. Yeah. And there's like some products that I'm like really excited to make that and I think it's just because they're new like I mentioned earlier like making custom dolls and like um the stuff I have planned for like Christmas and like I'm super excited about that and I I'm sure after like I make it a few times I'm gonna get bored of them but for now like I'm really excited (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens in the future. But yeah, I'm really excited about like some of the things I have planned. Um, so great transition. But speaking of the future, um, where do you see your business going in the future? So right now, I'm hoping to be able to stick to like my online shop. And then of course, the store. Um that is like one thing I I'm nervous about is after Christmas because especially like January, February, not a lot of people are doing shopping because the holidays just happened. They're trying um, to save money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's one thing. Like I want to be able to continue being in the store because I think it's super fun. And yeah. Um I just like it kind of depends on uh, my customers of whether or not I still continue to get customers. Like I'm super thankful for everyone who's like ordered from me and have bought something. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of like continuing to get mm-hmm. customers. Um, and of course, like returning customers, like you're one of them. And I have a few others that have, like continually bought in, like new products um yeah I'm like super thankful for that it's just a matter of like getting more <laughs> definitely yeah. and like I talked about earlier about maybe like being in other stores 
And again, that's like entirely dependent on if my business grows or not. Yeah. So you are kind of taking it like step by step. Yeah. Like you kind of have to because like unless you're ready to spend a bunch of money without necessarily getting that money back, Mm -hmm. then you kind of just have to take it one step at a time. Yeah. And a lot of people who did start from scratch sort of and didn't have like big investors or anything big to start out with do grow very slowly. But I think eventually, maybe if you stick to it, hopefully in the future, it can become something like big or at least medium. (laughs) But yeah, like it's still fun. And if like one day it's not fun anymore, then then yeah of course I might need to like make decisions but right now I'm still having fun and I'm enjoying it and yeah yeah that's kind of how I feel too like I am trying to stick to that once a week schedule but because it's a hobby I am also trying my best not to make it like not to be too hard on myself about it so far it's still fun and it is something fun to do in my free time but I have like noticed myself get more and more stressed about it and I feel like maybe closer to like I don't know at the end of the semester maybe I'll be too stressed or something and I'll have to take like a hiatus but we'll see what happens so far so far so good though what is your favorite thing about your business um hmm. I think my favorite thing is like, of course, like, making the items, but I've also, like, met, like, some really great people through, like, social media and, like, through the store, um, like, the owner of the store and um, one of the other um, artists that works there, like, they've both been, like, super supportive and, like, order things from me um, and, like, the other vendors at the store, like, everyone I met has been, like, super supportive and then there's also been, like, some like business owners that I've met through Instagram I feel so fortunate to have met like some of these people and be part of like this community I guess Mm -hmm. of like small business owners and like like everyone's so supportive of each other like it's all over like Instagram it's like community over competition and like those people that feel that way, like, have been, like, amazing. Like, if I needed, if I have a question, like, I know there's so many people that I could message and, like, ask for help. Or, like, if I just need a vent about something, like, there's people that relate that I could vent to. Right. That know exactly what you're going through. Yeah. That's great. I didn't even think of that as, like, an aspect. On the other hand, what's, like, your favorite thing about your business? Like, what do you think you like about your business that makes yours different or special or unique? Um, hmm. Kind of like a self-brag moment. (laughs) Ah, that's hard. I don't really, like, brag about myself. Um, I think the one thing that's, like, different from me versus like other like crochet businesses is that like it's meant to be a hobby and not like it's entirely meant for me to like do something I like to do but also be able to help people Mm -hmm. like in the process and if people buying from me means that I could raise money to then donate to charity I I just find that rewarding for myself and maybe it to some customers, it's rewarding for them to buy from a business that does that. Um, There's so many small businesses that, like, do, like, take a percentage of, like, their profits to donate. Um, But this is, like, entirely meant to be a hobby for me. So that's why I feel comfortable, like, donating all my profits. Um, If that change, if I do super well in the future maybe that will change but like I've always wanted to be able to donate more and like I don't necessarily have the time to volunteer so like being able to do this to donate in that way Mm -hmm. 
is like rewarding for me. Yeah. And then there's just like some products of mine that I think are like super cute that I like really love. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's also rewarding. Just like putting out a product that you're super proud of. Yeah. Like there, there are so many things that like, I'm like, wow, I made that. Like it looks super cute. (laughs) Yeah. Like I'm not going to put anything out there that I'm not proud of. You say that you will be donating all your profits from your sales to charity. Uh, someone wanted to know, um, how how did you choose and why did you choose to donate the profit and to whom? I mean, you kind of went through like why, but maybe like some charities that mean a lot to you. I've already like donated some of like, I call them ear savers. Um, oh, yeah, basic- the masks. Yeah, so they're basically like uh, semi-rectangular like crocheted thing with two buttons on the end that you um, like place at the back of your head and they're used um, for the face masks instead of them going around your ears they go around the buttons so they don't like irritate your ears as much Um, and I also have for found people who have it to wear help. masks all day in their job or something. Yeah. Your ears and get really strained being pulled forward. So it I think it does help. Yeah. And I've also like was getting headaches when I had to wear like the masks all day. And I found that help a lot. So I donated I think about fifty of them to um, nurses and doctors at one of the hospitals near me. Um yeah, so that's one place um, for the future. I'm hoping to be able to make like hats and scarves and stuff to donate to um, like homeless shelters in like my area and in the GTA um, just because winter's coming and I'm sure there's a lot of people that could use that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also wanted to make um, some like small blankets and stuff for pet um shelters um just because like any like pet who is at a shelter like waiting for adoption like blankets are very comforting to them and then they're able to take that blanket home when they do get adopted oh really Um, yeah just because yeah because it helps with like the transition and they could like like, keep the scent yeah i had some ideas of doing like specific animal like collections like let's say elephants like I'll have like elephant related products and then the money from those products will be donated to like a uh, elephant like reservation or like stuff like something like that like a charity and I would do like a bunch of different animals that'd be really cute what are some struggles that you had and how did you overcome them I, like, it will always be a struggle for me not to ha- worry about what other people think. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, like, the hardest part of, like, doing something like this is, like, not worrying about other people and, like, just focus on, like, what makes you happy and if you are proud of what you're putting out. And as long as you're never, like, hurting someone else, then who really cares what you're doing? Yeah, and I think, like, it's not really a struggle, but, like, a hard thing, too, is time management. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, being a full-time student, having a part-time job on top of this, like, I do get stressed out about, like, not being able to, like, make an item or, like, do something by the time I said I would want to do it. Um, so I constantly have to remind myself, like, this is a hobby. If you don't get it done today, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you have to sort of, like, reprioritize. But it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be on the side. It's not your main goal or your main anything. Yeah, like, I just have to, like, remind myself of, like, how I started and where, like, I've gotten to and, like, 
just remind myself to be proud of myself and yes. not like stress out about like, and it was supposed anything. to be de-stressing that's why you started yeah so it's ironic yeah, exactly. that now you're stressed about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like I try now like if I notice I'm starting to get stressed I like start something else like start a new project that's meant to be like just for me or just for like it's going to be like a gift to somebody like to try and like break up the business side and like the relaxing side okay so that's a good strategy but then aren't you like kind of tempted to like if it turns out great you're like now I'm kind of tempted to put this on my website (laughs) yeah there's been some things that like I've started to make for like let's say myself for a family member and then I'm like oh maybe I'll put it on my website and like that's how the my scrunchies started like I made one for my sister and I'm like oh it turned out pretty well maybe like I should start selling them and that like became one of my first products on my website. I think you could like even put the beakers the stuffed beakers and flasks I think that would be cute in, like, a niche sort of thing for, like, anyone who happens to like crochet and also science. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, there's, like, so many products I've planned that are, like, in itself, like, niche. Mm -hmm. But, like, if I have multiple different niche things, then, like, it kind of makes a category in itself. Just, like, on your website, have a category for niche items. (laughs) Yeah. This is, like, a perfect question to wrap up our episode just let's say someone has been thinking of starting not necessarily business because I started the podcast that's not a business but I was inspired by you just like jumping in and doing your thing if someone's sort of on the fence about starting something putting themselves out there do you have anything to say to them I guess not to sound like Nike but just do it (laughs) like if you're on the fence like if it's not gonna hurt anybody or like affect your mental health in a great way like negatively then just do it because in the end it's just rewarding to be able to say you did it even if you're not successful or reach as many like followers as you wanted to you've probably still impacted at least one person and that in itself is rewarding and if you could have fun too why not true that's a good a good way to summarize and also again you don't have to be 100 percent ready don't get like too overwhelmed with the research about it you'll figure it out as you go and maybe in the beginning it'll kind of suck but you'll hit your stride if you keep keep at it yeah exactly like if you're gonna wait until you're a hundred percent ready or a hundred percent motivated that will never come like that is like one thing like my therapist has told me like motivation does not come before you do the thing you do the thing and become motivated to be able to continue doing it. Oh, wow. Whether that's, like, doing, getting into a exercise routine or starting a new, like, hobby. Like, yes, anything you start new is exciting. But if you want, like, you have to keep doing it in order to continue to be motivated to do it. True. Very wise words. <laughs> See, that's that's the thing, like talking to you every day in the lab has really been a huge motivator, motivating factor in this whole podcast even existing because I had recorded a few episodes in like July, August, and then I kept putting off publishing them because I was so nervous about everything. And I also like kept these excuses like I kept saying like oh I can't publish until I have cover art and then I kept not making the cover art because it was just like the last thing holding me back and I kind of liked having that excuse so finally Sarah's like 
let me just make it for you. And I'm like, you know what? No, I'll download like the free trial of Adobe Illustrator. I'll make something on Photoshop, not Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator. And I'll just stick it on. It can be a placeholder and I'll figure it out later. And I ended up liking it. I don't know if it'll actually be a placeholder or not. We'll see if I ever end up making something nicer, but that's my cover art. I made that in like an hour on Adobe Illustrator. Um, And, you know, even the first day that I published, I think um, I published it and I wanted it to be like a soft open sort of thing. But then the next day I came in, came into the lab and I told Sarah that my podcast episode was up, the first one. And she's like, okay, promote it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> You're literally like, just post it. Post it on your Snapchat story. Just do it. And I'm like, okay, I guess you're right. Like, why am I not? Like, what? why, why am I holding back? There's literally no reason. What is the difference between promoting it now and promoting it later? Like, it's already out. Just put, post it. Just do it. <laughs> Nike. Yeah. Like... If there's something you want to do, if it's not going to hurt anybody, then just do it because that's what you want to do. And and if it's going to make you happier, just do it. And then what about like negative feedback? Because I think that's what a lot of people might be scared of. That might be the only thing. Maybe they have everything ready, but they're just so paralyzed by the thought of negative feedback. Um, yeah, that was like a huge concern for me too I just kind of reminded myself like with every negative feedback there's probably like a hundred positive feedbacks so try not to dwell on that one negative feedback um I've gotten some negative feedback and when I gotten it it really hurt Mm -hmm. I'm like not gonna like sugarcoat it and say it didn't but like over time like you get so many positive feedbacks that the negative feedback doesn't start to impact you as much and I'm just really lucky to have a great support system in my family and friends that like when I do receive negative feedback I'm able to turn to them to help cope with it um but yeah like if negative feedback is the only thing stopping you then I would try to just like do it anyways and if you do get negative feedback try and come up with a coping mechanism for that Mm -hmm. because you're never gonna make everybody happy and if you're gonna sacrifice your own happiness in order to make everyone happy then it's not worth it like you have to put yourself first true that's a good way to end it off I think hopefully we've motivated you even a little bit to try to do something pursue that hobby start something because honestly just like our supervising professor says there's no time like the present thank you sarah for being on this episode and spending time talking to me and hopefully impacting someone out there listening and If you want to check out Sarah's store, check out our uh, promotion happening for the Mushroom Podcast merchandise. Please visit uh, SQ underscore stitches on Instagram, and she'll have a link in her bio to her store. Her store is, is it SQ dash stitches? Yeah, SQ dash stitches dot my Shopify dot com. But yeah, there's a link on my Instagram and on my Facebook page, SQ Stitches. And if you also want to check out Maker's Market store, that is also somewhere on Sarah's Instagram. We've said the address. I can post a bunch of links in the in the description of this episode as well. And I also want to remind you, I have um, I have a link in the description. Two links. I have a link for the Google form that if you want to submit any sort of anonymous question, comment, discussion topic, you can submit that and it'll be totally anonymous. Or there's also an anchor link 
with a um, voice recording option. If you want to hear your voice on the podcast, I can play it and then you can give me a topic or something. That one is not anonymous. You can, like, it asks you for your name, but you could also put an alias or something. Whatever you want. Disguise your voice. I don't care. If you want to suggest something, a topic or a question, then it could be read or played on the next episode of the podcast. And please subscribe, rate the podcast, uh, follow the Mushroom Pod on Instagram. I think I also... I set up a YouTube page for the podcast. If you like to listen to it with subtitles, then the YouTube auto-generated captions are pretty decent. They're not like 100% great, but I thought that that would be a good option if you like subtitles. So check that out. Sarah, again, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I was very honored and excited to be on an episode. I think this is a great topic too, like we're kind of getting away from relationships, but I think it's still a really impactful thing for people of our age and like emerging adults and small business owners, like it's super exciting and you could do anything like in this, you could do anything in this world, you could do anything in your life, make it count. Exactly. So I'll see you on the next episode of The Mushroom. Hopefully, if I don't stress myself out too much, it will be next week. So, see you next time in the mushroom.